like artists. I like talking with artists. I like talking with people. I like exchanging ideas. I like seeing things as they happen. I like figure, fumbling my way through and figuring it out as I go. Are there any holes in the museum's collection that you... Oh yeah, there are holes, like Mack truck sized holes. And? And the, uh, names? I, I, the museum doesn't give itself the, the privilege mm -hmm. to fill holes. We're too okay. tight. Okay. We really are. Uh, I think, I think, and that history, uh, they're huge holes. They're like every, every institution has some holes. A contemporary art museum that started collecting in, in the early 60s, like 63, right? 63, 64, and uh, goes back to the early 40s as it's like 20 years. It gives itself like a 20 year window to collect. Mm -hmm. Like from the, the beginning, it was a hole. Yes. <laughs> the institution was a hole to fill of 20 years of art. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that time kept going forward. That hole just gets bigger. Because your starting point stays the same, but you've moved on. So we've gone from a 20 year retrospective gaze mm -hmm. on our collection to now a 70 year perspective. Mm -hmm. So the holes have just gotten bigger, and the means have gotten less. Mm -hmm. So the best thing you can do in those circumstances is um, is um, try to to bring in works into the collection that are compelling enough to 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 if they don't fill a hole, shine a light on it. You know, like the idea that these works works by. Like we can tell, like there's certain stories we can tell really well. Automatism, we can tell that story through and through. Uh, even like general abstract art in, in Quebec, that, that story can be told really well within the collection. That means that there's a blind spot, which is everything else that happened in those years. So um, what do you do? Well, how do you go about it? So there are two ways. One way that we're thinking of going about it is 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 seeing these 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 holes, but not so much as as sort of historical styles, but maybe through individuals, like whose work can best exemplify a tendency, and then looking into that more, and what are the possibilities of bringing, like, and look in the collection, what do we have in the collection, what can, so that's the idea. And that kind of, that's just, that's, that's as the extent of sort of the historical um, perspective we'll take on, on, on acquiring works from the past. Most of the works that come into the museum's collection, as you're probably familiar, are through donation. Um, so it's, that you have to dig up people that are willing to part with those pieces and sometimes those artists aren't artists that have been really collected because now we're a generation past we've like the automatist the 50s the 60s it's pretty covered 70s covered partially pretty well but that's when at the time like that's when the, pe the curators here those were their peers mm -hmm. so there were things like Robert Racine and um, 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 Raymond Gervais and uh, uh, Serge Toussignan and people that were involved in the vehicle were very kind of present in the collection. Peter Nass and so on. We've got a, significantly some, a lot of works. Um, Gunter Nolte and all these guys uh, back in the day. So now people that are still practicing that were involved in that scene, like what do you do? Like who, which artists do you finish? So that's a whole question. Like the history's moved in the uh, 70s and 80s and, and that question. We're working with Pierre Dorion but we're not working with his early work. I'm working mainly with his more like work from the 90s on so how do you how do you attest to that to those 80s and what is that going to mean we're kind of looking at it now and looking at stuff that's been been acquired in those years mm -hmm. and what story can we tell is there anything mm -hmm. missing and it's not real but it's not a very active part the the development of the collection is and jose would would be much more eloquent in, in testifying to this but is is kind of how do uh works uh resonate now in the community and in the public and in the ideas that are circulating today and how do how can you import that into the collection here 
where it makes sense. When Mark was here, he gave really weird kind of. You know, if he ever sees this, you think. But he, they were weird, and I think he would recognize it. He said, you know, different, different. They were different, but it was the idea that okay, and he said so really openly. So I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not. I think he can. He would say that the, the Montreal Museum of Contemporary Arts collection can fall into three really broad typologies, and he went, and they were medi to him they were medium based. It was installation art, photography, and abstract painting. Or abstraction. Fair, but once you've said that, you really haven't said a great deal. But at the same time, it was it kind of helped you look at things differently. So he acquired the Thomas Hirschhorn. He acquired the um, Marcel Zama diorama, and uh, those are two major. And the um, Spring Hill, but um, that was given. That she she gave it to us. The the beds. The, mm -hmm. So these are three large-scale installation works by living contemporary artists that go in with the Guillaume Bell we've got and a lot of the Mel Charney and can dialogue with a lot of stuff like that and um, so on. Claude Toussignan, another example, major perspective of a major figure of Canadian abstraction. Makes perfect sense within the same. He acquired works by the Sanchez brothers, by Candida Hoffer, by Vic Muniz, and he also did the show. So he kind of like followed those things. He didn't, he wasn't about performance art, wasn't about relational aesthetics, wasn't about, these weren't the things that mm -hmm. he felt were pertinent as a complement to our collection. Now I think Maggie feels quite differently about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I would hope so. <laughs> and you could... Mm -hmm. You'll, yeah, and so these are things that she's more interested in, is the sort of more attesting to to the sort of 90s and 2000s, and the, the re-dematerialization of the artwork. 